Con artists and deceivers have always been among us. Today, we are focusing on the character of Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home, who deceives Peter Parker and the world into believing that he is a hero, when in reality, he is a master manipulator, benefiting from his lies, deceptions, and illusions. Just what kind of person is a Mysterio? We will first investigate the Jungian archetype of Mysterio, then we will reveal how this film contains a valid message about how the powerful operate in our world, and how they manipulate and control the public through lies and deceptions. Why is the pattern of the powerful manipulating society an archetypal pattern that continues throughout history? And finally, what can we do about it? Like Agent Mobius and Loki, I want to know what makes Mysterio tick? Here's a one minute recap of events to refresh you for our study of Mysterio. In Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter Parker goes on a much needed European vacation with his classmates. However, secretly, he's evading the pressure and responsibility he's been facing in his life to become a more responsible Avengers level hero. Are you the head Avenger now? Uh, no, I'm not. Peter soon discovers he can't escape responsibility for very long before he gets involved in a conspiracy staged by Mysterio to convince the world that they are under attack by the mythic beings known as the Elementals. Unfortunately, Peter falls for Mysterio's lies and turns over Edith AI drone technology that was given to him by Tony Stark. Peter thinks he's doing the right thing by giving the technology to someone more adult and responsible than him, but in reality, he gave it away to avoid the greater responsibility that should have been his. Mysterio fools Peter not necessarily with elaborate lies and illusions, but simply by influencing him to go with his preferences to enjoy being a teenager and have a good time over the weight of his adult responsibilities. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> the best con artists gain your trust with lies that appeal to your preferences before discovering their con later, which makes this portrayal of Mysterio an appropriate depiction of a master deceiver. The fact that Quentin Beck seems like a friend to Peter's desires gives us, the audience, a chance to fall for Mysterio's dishonesty just like Peter does. I feel the need to remind you that the word archetype means original model, and I find it most helpful to think of archetypes as simply repeating patterns. One of the premises of this show is to look at the repeating patterns in comic books and discover what they mirror in the real world. Mysterio, the master of illusions, first appeared in the comics in 1964, where he was a stuntman and special effects artist who used his movie magic to make people see what he wanted them to see. In the film version, his origin story was changed to tie him in with Tony Stark's storyline. At some point, Quentin Beck went to work for Tony Stark with his completely believable hologram casting technology. Beck imagined that his invention could be used in an infinite array of applications that could change the world forever. However, Tony Stark, who funded it, decided to use it as a therapy device to help him cope with a childhood trauma. He then labeled this hologram casting technology BARF, which deeply hurt Beck. Just like Tony Stark, Beck is a genius creator, inventor, and master builder in the world. We can quickly identify him as the Jungian creator or artist archetype. Both of them were brilliant inventors, and as creator archetypes, their core desire is to create things of enduring value that provide structure to the world. So, in this film, we get to investigate the question, what is the shadow expression of the artist archetype? Being under Tony Stark, Beck felt wronged by his boss, and he felt his creation and talent were abused and underappreciated, and thus, he felt fully justified in taking the course of action that he chooses. As archetypes have light and dark reflections, we can call him the scorned creator archetype, the shadow expression of his nature. This public event was a traumatic experience for Beck, where he felt someone with power above him defined his life work as trivial. As we do, he took this as an insult to his identity and thought it belittled his importance. As a result of the core wound of feeling maligned, he overcompensates in response. In Beck's mind, he feels he should stop others from defining him ever again and take power and control what other people think of him completely. He will even go so far as to now use his invention 
to redefine himself in the public's eye, to portray himself as a great protector and hero that everyone will listen to, an Avengers level hero. Because he feels like the world has wronged him, he feels justified in wronging them back and becoming a liar, illusionist, manipulator. He's expressing the dark side of his traits as the Jungian archetype of artist or creator, and he has become a master con artist. If we consult the tarot, we find a symbolic archetype that represents his action and the force of his intention in the Seven of Swords. Reversed, the Seven of Swords may signify the meanings of maliciousness, betrayal, dishonesty, pathological liar, two-faced, or con artist. From his perspective, he feels a condemnation of the public. He may think something like, they didn't recognize my genius talent, but they will appreciate me when I tell them what to think for his talents do give him the ability to control what the public thinks. And I think it's interesting that this movie chooses to portray not just a solo act, but someone who needs the help of a team to accomplish the tasks that he does, which makes it something more realistic to the real world, and gives us a chance to portray how a sociopathic narcissist manipulates a team. To be unrecognized, unappreciated, and overlooked by people can lead to genuine anger and condemnation of others. Long term, this can affect your mental health and even lead to mental illness. Quentin Beck is suffering from bitterness and resentment, and he has assembled a team that shares this spite of being overlooked and underappreciated for their unique talents. It is recognized in psychological study that individuals and groups have a genuine need for their contributions to be recognized. Knowing this, Beck has persuaded them to join his team by appealing to their preferences to be seen. However, he's lying to them as well. He knows how to manipulate them because he knows what they already want. In the bar scene, perhaps he even seems like a nice villain boss to work for. But really, he's a narcissist, and this fact is revealed in the following scene where mistakes are made and he freaks out threatening them. This scene is an excellent way to portray a sociopathic narcissist manipulator. They appeal to your preferences to gain your allegiance to them at first. And then they'll treat you like crap and threaten you if you don't do precisely what they want or if you try to leave. It's all part of the grand manipulation or con. For the teammates, they are still getting used by someone who has no inner morality code or ethics to prevent him from doing whatever benefits him. And in the end, they're all gonna likely regret ever joining up. Let's take a look at the B story and recognize that this movie has two antagonists. The A story villain, Mysterio, and the B story villain, Brad. Brad is the opposing gentleman suitor attempting to win MJ by lying about Peter being amorous with some other girl so that MJ will no longer be interested in him. You cannot show that photo, dude. Come on. I'm sorry, man. I have to. She deserves the truth. Brad is attempting to sabotage Peter on the scale of his personal high school life, while Mysterio is trying to sabotage Peter in his professional superhero life. In this way, both villains are doing the same thing, lying for the purpose of self-enhancement, which is the second type of the four types of deception as defined by social science. For this reason, I'm gonna call this a fractal villain pair, as both villains echo the theme of the film. In the end, Brad ends up being defeated not by Peter, but by himself for even attempting the ploy. We witness MJ with her empathic and observational powers uncovering what Brad was up to, and she exposes to the class that he was a dishonest person. Brad's petty attempt at deception failed because he chose an aware target. I believe Mysterio is one of the best villains in the MCU because as an illusionist and con artist of the public pulling off this massive scheme, he's relevant to the collective concerns that we're all experiencing in today's society. He's a pertinent villain because he's related to something emerging in our collective awareness. The dilemma that Mysterio creates for our hero is a dilemma that has occurred repeatedly in history and one that many worldwide are facing currently and one that continues to threaten us in the future to come. Inside Mysterio's attempted illusion, this film portrays the balancing act between the powerful ruling elite and the public citizenry. Why is it that dictators, despots, tyrants, and authoritarians continuously rise to power in the world despite the fact that we clearly don't want these mad kings ruling over us? They achieve power because they are effective manipulators, and they continually achieve power because the manipulation continues to work. 
time and time again, the wrong people end up in control. And they do so because for some reason we continue to fall for their manipulation, illusions, and lies. For some of us, we may witness specific masses casting their undying trust in a central figure that others can tell is lying and deceiving. But at the same time, we might not know whom to trust fully ourselves. This is a very generalized statement, but we live in a world full of lies, where people in power tell the public what they want them to believe rather than the truth because it's not beneficial to them to do so. Sometimes these lies are bold-faced and obvious, but yet they still work. These influential figures continue to get away with it because their lies work on their audience of millions of loyal fans, hypnotized, who seem willing to believe anything they say. Thus, we witness how they easily deceive so many people. So a villain, who is a deceiver of the public and a master of illusions, exemplifies a very relevant concern that we have living in a society where truth is obfuscated and intentionally confused. Could it be that this confusion and obfuscation are all side effects of the master con at work? There you have it, folks, conclusive proof that Spider-Man was responsible for the brutal murder of Mysterio. At this point in our discussion, you might be asking, who are these individuals that seek power and what drives them to become manipulators, liars, and deceivers? Like Mysterio, how can a powerful individual lie so effectively? Let us look to the wisdom of Frank Herbert, who studied governments and power structures for his sci-fi novel series, Dune. All governments suffer a reoccurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not that power corrupts, but that it is magnetic to the corruptible. A recent Columbia University study concluded that people with power are better liars. They do not express evident signs of distress in emotion, cognition, cortisol response, and nonverbal tells. As such, high power individuals may be more likely to engage in deception and other acts of corruption. Finally, it is likely much more difficult to catch a high power liar. The study explains that powerful people are more focused on what they can gain from the lie than on the effects of the lie itself. In addition, individuals experiencing power are more likely to focus on rewards as opposed to costs, which could shift focus away from thinking about getting caught in a lie and instead focus their thinking on lying successfully. This brings us to the four types of deception as defined by social psychologists. The powerful may be engaging in these two types of deception. One, pro-social lying, lying to protect someone or to benefit or help others. Two, self-enhancement, lying to save face, to avoid embarrassment, disapproval or punishment, or to gain an advantage. This study describes that the powerful are more focused on the energy that they will gain than any sense of morality or ethics that would prevent them from lying in order to gain the energy source. This bar graph illustrates how a normal person, a low power lie teller, might experience a lot of negative moral emotions when lying. However, a high power lie teller experiences less negative moral emotions when lying. And vice versa, high power lie tellers experience more negative emotions when telling the truth than low power lie tellers. A pathological power seeking manipulator will not feel bad in becoming a demagogue. They simply will pursue anything that works to bring them power, anything that works to bring them their energy source. Thus, they will attempt to capitalize on people's greatest weaknesses, telling people what they want to hear. Most people only see what they want to see. Most people only know what they want to know. Most people only believe what they want to believe. Why is this? Because these are in their preferences. As human beings, we're wired to interpret new information as confirming our beliefs and reject it if it runs counter to those beliefs. In this way in which we filter out information whether or not it goes along with our beliefs or it defies our existing beliefs become our preferences. And their preferences over time, conditioned by manipulation in the media they consume, become their sense of identity. Most people want to believe in their preferences to believe what they want to believe. So if someone comes along and verifies their preferences, they will give them their attention and trust. The manipulators are telling them what they want to hear, and most people are too weak to resist this form of manipulation because it appeals to their identities. The powerful manipulator seeking power 
is taking advantage of their victims' greatest weaknesses, telling them something they want to hear. You need to wake up! Now, let's look at what Mysterio reveals about us. Large, concentrated groups of people are very susceptible to falling prey to liars and deceivers in power because of a particular weakness in people that the powerful may exploit. This vulnerability in the public exists at any given point in history and has repeatedly been exploited by the powerful. At any moment, it is a given that a percentage of the population of any civilization will suffer from some difficulties living in society. That may be poverty, job loss, declining way of life, environmental decline, food and water shortages, or it could be even minor and trivial problems that have kept them from meeting the challenges of life. Many people want their problems solved by whatever leadership exists, as it is any government's job to keep its society functioning. This deficiency becomes even more vulnerable during stressful times. As a result, people tend to cast all their hopes and dreams onto a singular savior figure, or a superhero, who will come in and magically solve all their problems for them. This situation presents an opportunity for the con artist, because now he knows what these vulnerable people in the public want. I created Mysterio to give the world someone to believe in! This scenario is one of the dangers super figures whom we adore present to us that we might worship them and inadvertently give all our power away to them. In wanting someone else to come along and meet their needs and desires, people make themselves most accessible to deception. The most formidable deceiver knows this weakness in people, and he needs only to promise them something they already want, while blaming their problems on someone else externally. We see this illustrated in the film. Mysterio recognizes the susceptibility in the public to fall prey to their own illusions. It's easy to fool people when they can't stop fooling themselves, he says. Another exploit used on people by the powerful to manipulate them is their vulnerability to believe in false external threats. People unfortunately want to think that some bad guy causes all of their problems, and they want someone to blame for why they are unhappy and unfulfilled in life. This fear and desire to blame is doubly beneficial to powerful figures, because by creating a false external threat, it motivates their victims to join together, and also because they want someone to blame so that they don't have to take responsibility for their failed duties. Throughout history, the powerful exploit this liability in people by blaming their failures and the people's problems on some false external threat. We see this illustrated by Mysterio. His false external threat is the elementals, and he claims that the only solution to this false threat is him. Only I can save you. Just as it happens in real life, the elementals represent the concept of the false external threat. We should learn to heed the warning this fable illustrates to us, that we should not want to rely on any super figure to save us or inadvertently give our power away to deceivers that we should not decline in our internal morality, lean into our preferences and assumptions to blame our problems on false external threats. You can't trick me anymore. Instead, it is best for people to learn about their own power in protecting themselves from illusion and deception by using their intuition and innate knowledge their Peter Tink. This will be discussed in a further video as we continue. In our next episode, we will dive far deeper in the first of our elite teachings. We will discuss self-deception and conditioning of the collective mind. We will then explain the grand scheme of one of the greatest illusions the powerful have created in our world. Remember to subscribe to my channel.